They've lost the last two, but Matt Brown said, if you told me we'd be 9-3 and three and playing for the conference title, I would have signed up for that before the year began. and deferred. Clemson elected to take the kickoff from Noah Burnett. It's down and returnable for Charlotte's own Will Shipley just down the road in Weddington, North Carolina. And he's down at the 30-yard line. So that's where they'll begin led by DJ Uyunglele when they were off to that 7-0 start. He was rock solid. But the last five as they've gone 3-2 and two, he has struggled, and the big number there, the turnovers, he's been a part of it. But it's unbelievable. They were one of the best teams in the country at the beginning of the year not turning the ball over. Now it's one turnover after another. Well, five games in a row, they've lost the turnover margin. It's hard to win close football games when you do that. First time that's happened in five straight games under Dabo Sweeney. Out throwing, and a sinker blown away to Joseph and Ghana. Not an encouraging start for Uwe Ungalale off an 8-for-29 performance in their one-point loss to South Carolina last weekend. This is a safe throw called by Brandon Streeter, but a, 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 a quarterback that showed no confidence in just letting it rip. What did Dabo say to Molly? Just go out there and let it fly. Let it rip. He did not let that pass rip. They try one in the opposite direction. More accurate throw this time to Antonio Williams, but he swung down. of a banged up secondary. He was a backup for much of the year, but they're playing without two starters tonight in Storm Duck and all-conference corner and Cam Kelly, an outstanding safety. They're the two latest injuries on a defense that's been decimated. Their defensive numbers are not very good at all, but the last couple weeks they have played better, particularly in critical situations. So on number 31, Will Hardy, he'll get a lot of playing time tonight, a true freshman. Uyunglele, way off target again in the general direction of Antonio Williams. Cavazos had the coverage, and the Tar Heel fans and players are into it early. Well, this is a good protection, a nice clean pocket for DJ. And he's just errant on the throw, so he threw three plays this possession. And he was way off target on two of them and completed an easy one to the opposite side. That is Cade Klubnik, the backup quarterback. We were told by the coaches during the week that they plan to play him no matter what. They'd like to get him some reps. He's a freshman. If DJ continues to throw the ball like that, we might see him sooner rather than later. Aiden Swanson, the punt. Josh Downs, the fair catch. What a redshirt freshman season it's been for Drake May. Myers Park High School here in Charlotte. He has already established a number of records at North Carolina. He's leading the country in total yardage per game. He's thrown for 3,847 yards and 35 touchdown passes. The yardage number is the single season record. It was held by Mitch Trubisky. I love his poise, his maturity for a young guy, and his ability to make throws off platform, either to his left or his right. Tall and athletic, 6'4", 220, on target in the flat. Kamari Morales, one of three tight ends to whom they throw the ball. And they'll mark him down at the 30-yard line. Started to move the chains, but it's a gain of eight. Same philosophy for Phil Longo. Quick, easy throw. Get your quarterback hot early and get the ball out of your hands quick. May, lots of time. Well protected by Mac Brown's offensive line. Now showing that athleticism. And out of bounds across the 40. Chased out at the 42-yard line. See, this is what teams have done the last couple weeks. Georgia Tech and North Carolina State, a healthy sprinkling of a three-man rush drop eight. The great May knows he doesn't have anything open, but the three-man rush doesn't get to him, and he shows his ability to create and extend plays with his leg. This guy is the leading rusher on the North Carolina football team, in addition to what he's done as a passer. 641 rushing yards. ACC Player of the Year, the Offensive Player of the Year, the Rookie of the Year. Given time again, and throwing deep in single coverage, some hand fighting, and it's caught but out of bounds. Kobe Pesor with Sheridan Jones in coverage. 
for the Tigers. Really great coverage by Sheridan Jones because he knows where the sideline is. And he just forces the receiver out of bounds. Even though it's a nice catch, there's no way for him to be in bounds because the defender did a nice job just riding him out of the field of play. Thought it was an improving secondary in the latter part of the year until they got torched by Spencer Rattler last week. Wes Goodwin is the defensive coordinator, playing without R.J. Mickens. One of their key safeties in the first half. He was ejected for targeting the second half last week. Huge hole, Elijah Green. Across midfield and down about a yard short of the first down. Trenton Simpson made the tackle. Well, again, just count numbers. It's only three defensive linemen. That says run. They're, they're playing to defend the pass. It was a nice run. They go with tempo. They get the first down. Elijah Green was fourth string at the beginning of the year. They were going with running back by committee. But they decided to make it more competitive in the practices. Whoever practiced better, played better, was going to get the bulk of the carries, and that's been Elijah Green down the stretch. I think this is the best quarterback Clemson has faced and the best set of wide receivers. Josh Downs, the leader, the slot guy, number 11. They'll move him all around. He's in the slot right here to the bottom, and Antoine Green is a big play guy if he gets one-on-one -on -one coverage up the top. Rush again, well picked up. Kobe Pesor. Inside the 40, they'll give him the 39-yard line. Sheridan Jones there again, graduate student from Norfolk, Virginia. They do like to play with tempo. Thinks that's another way they can help the offensive line try to wear down that defensive front, prevent substituting. May beautiful ball right on target. And a first down at the 14 to Mari Morales again. Well, again, Clemson is starting out this game with the idea we're going to drop eight. But there's holes in that, in that coverage, even when you drop that many. If you give Drake May time, as Mac Brown told Molly, if we protect him, he can be great against anybody. And he is showing that right now with a clean pocket. He knows how to find holes in your defense. Both of these teams have outstanding production from the tight ends. 68 catches for the Tar Heel group, fifth in the country among tight ends. May swing pass, good tackle in the open field by Barrett Carter. He dropped Elijah Green for a gain of only one. One of the areas that's been a little bit disappointing for Clemson this year defensively has been there in the red zone, the number of touchdowns, the percentage of touchdowns that they've given up is right around 60%. For the first 10 games, North Carolina, one of the best in the country at scoring touchdowns, over 75%. Last two weeks, a little bit off. So, important first possession here in the red zone for both teams. Carolina still the highest scoring offense in the ACC, 37 points per game. But they've sputtered in the two losses. May inside the 10. They were 9-1. They wrapped up their division to Coastal after a win at Wake Forest on November 12th. So Phil Longo, all the time, you'll start to think about let's play our way into college football playoff consideration. With a back-to-back -back home losses to Georgia Tech and NC State. And they didn't score more than 27 to either one of them. 17 uh, against the Jackets. A single up here. If you want it. Third down and five. May pressure through. Progressive pylon cam replay. Josh, uh, Josh came from the all the way from the other side of the field, but it was the quarterback's ability to extend plays that got him there. 84 catches to lead the conference, and he missed two games early in the year due to injury. He had 101 catches last year. One of the problems the last couple of weeks has been some drop balls, uncharacteristic. He dropped the big one late against Tech that might have won the game.
They pull the tight end and watch Simpson kind of get fooled, whether it's the back of the quarterback. Morales gets a nice block to lead the play. But the design of the play, you couldn't have asked for a better scripted first drive by the North Carolina offense. Good blend of run and pass. And Drake May doing his thing. Noah Burnett adds the extra point. Well, we wondered about motivation level. Carolina clearly fired up on both sides of the ball and on the sideline. And Clemson, an uninspiring start on both sides of the ball. Now, Barrett Carter had an unblocked path to the quarterback, but you see Drake May's ability to extend plays and throw it off platform. And the leading rusher on the North Carolina team runs it in for the first touchdown. Here's the view from our AT&T 5G Skycam. Todd Blackwood's loves the AT&T 5G Skycam. Don't forget to check out the AT&T 5G Skycast. Streaming live right now on ESPN3 and on ESPN. Probably the kickoff. The AT&T camera. That'll be a tough track again. First one of the night for Noah Burnett. Well, the first play of the game. Brandon Street trying to call a safe pass for DJ. Get him off to a good start. He threw the sinker ball on that one. He was better on the second one. And he was off target with a good pocket on this one. You just wonder where he's at confidence-wise. After 8 for 29 a week ago, he just seems like the kind of guy to be that he's got to get off to a good start. If he gets off to a good start, he can settle in. and He's got the tools. If he doesn't, things can spiral on him a little bit. Give it to Shipley. He got only 15 carries last week, which surprised some. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, to Todd's point, coaches have spent a lot of time on the sidelines encouraging DJ Uyunglele, telling him, move on, keep your confidence up. And Dabo Sweeney told us before the game, he made a cut up an hour long of DJ playing well and said, this is who you are. This is who I need you to be in this game. And I'm told he's spent a lot of extra time with his receivers this week working on timing and communication after those drops last it's been all hands on deck to get his confidence up front. So DJ didn't play well last week. They're flagged before the snap, but it was also a collective effort. Offense, number 56. Five-yard penalty, second down. Will Putnam, the center. Dabo gave us the number five drop passes last week in the game, and obviously their defense got torched deep. More than once by Spencer Rattler yes. and the game clock. Six pass completions over 20 yards. They had three turnovers. They were outplayed in special teams. And so there were a lot of reasons why they lost the game a week ago. Beyond DJ Uyunglele. DJ sets up a screen. Shipley, a nice leaping catch. Ran into one of his own blockers and stumbles ahead to the 30-yard line. Obviously, when you're the quarterback, you lose a rivalry game. You complete 28% of your passes. You're going to get a lot of heat, but Dabo said he's still the starter. There was speculation when they go on to club deck. He's not the reason we lost the game. They had a couple of turnovers in the kick return game, but uh, certainly he could play a lot better. We've seen yeah. that this year. He's had a very up-and-down ride. He's had nine pretty good games and three below-average games, quite frankly. Yanked a couple of times in favor of Klumpnik. He's pressured, steps away from the rush, lofts it for Shipley, who made a diving attempt and couldn't take it in. This is a great effort by DJ. His right tackle, Blake Miller, the freshman, got whipped right away, and that's why DJ had to leave the pocket. Watch that inside move. He's got to leave the pocket, and he does all he can to just try to give Shipley a chance. Shipley not able to come down with the catch, but really nice movement out of the pocket by DJ. More mobile this year. Josh Downs back for the punt from Ava Swanson. They lost 30 pounds in the offseason. Battled injuries a lot of last year. In a 10-win season. Championship game 2015. Tar Heel fans still upset about it. A lot of controversy. They were down by eight, a minute 11 to go. Successful onside kick. They were called for being offside. It looked like anybody was offside. The Tigers held on.
to win the game. 420 yards of total offense for Deshaun Watson. The only time Carolina has played in the title game. This is the 18th year of the ACC championship game. 7 nothing Carolina. And the pass batted down by Barrett Carter. They're trying to get it to the tight end, John Copenhaver. Kate Klopnik and DJ Uyunglele get along extremely well. Street talk about what a great quarterback room he has. Elijah Green, the catch and run, got banged down by Jeremiah Trotter. But I would not be as surprised if the offense remains stagnant as when we see Klopnik. See if Clemson decides to go after Greg May on this third down play. Six for eight in the ball game. He's very comfortable to start the football game. They've not gotten around him too much. Third down and five. There is movement. Mike Roach, the referee. Snap and fraction. Offense, number 65. Five yard penalty. Corey Gaynor, the center, grad transfer from Miami. And he's been outstanding. Remember, Cody Longo talked about how quickly he formed a great relationship with Drake May. They are great friends. He just got there in June, so I mean, he, he made it immediately quickly by his presence. Longo goes to lunch every Thursday with Drake May and Corey Gaynor. Third down and 10, the call now for Coach Longo. Pressure. May hit as he throws incomplete. And he got smothered by K.J. Henry. So they lined up K.J. Henry over the center. Here he is right here instead of a defensive end. He starts in and then moves out. And of all these defensive linemen, the guy who has been the most consistent every game has been that guy, K.J. Henry. He was disruptive a week ago against South Carolina and all season long. He has played with a pretty high motive. One of their team leaders. There's Ben Cairn in the punt. Ireland native in his fourth year as a starting punter for the Tar Heels. Low line drive, fair catch made by Antonio Williams at the 29-yard line. A 49-yard punt. North Carolina leading. Seven and up yet. DJ Uyunglele on the sideline. And here is Cade Clubnick, the true freshman from Austin, Texas. The number one high school dual threat quarterback recruit of the country out of Westlake. And he fakes the handoff to Shipley. Throws it out wide. Antonio Williams down the sideline and shoved out of bounds. With a first down at the 45-yard line. Chased out by Geo Biggers. That's like a triple option play. He could give it to Shipley. He could keep it on the run. Or instead of having a pitch man like traditional triple option, he's got that quick throw. Good first play for Klubnik. And lets it going no huddle now. He came into their game against Syracuse and they trailed by double digits in the second half and led them back to victory. On the day when Uwe Ungerle struggled, Davis Allen looked like someone grabbed him by the face mask as well. He's across midfield to the 49-yard line of North Carolina. Just a little swipe. Well, when Klubnik came in to the Syracuse game, and we did that game, he came in to basically just hand off the football. They didn't ask him to throw. He also came in the Notre Dame game, and he threw a really bad interception deep in his own territory that led to an Irish touchdown. Well, Mata joins Shipley in the backfield. Shipley only one carry. He blocked for Mata. Powerful runner. First down to the Tar Heel 43. For the loss last week, Shipley 15 carries, 132 yards, and he was asked after the game if he'd like more carries. He said, of course. It was a response to the question. He was trying to bury the coaches. Right. Now, but I think it was a reasonable question to ask. Should and, he have been involved more? And only six carries in the second half. You know, when they were really sputtering on offense. Had a thousand yard rushing season. Trying to turn the corner and does. And he's shoved out by Will Hardy. True freshman from Lawrenceville, Georgia. See, 
I think for them to win, I think he needs to touch the ball at least 25 times. That, that's what I think they need to do because not only is he their best player, but he gets better and stronger the longer the game goes. Excellent speed and powerful inside as well. He can run between the tackles. Club mitt, long throw, caught. Antonio Williams. Well, this is a nice job of Klubnik moving to his left a little bit in the pocket, buying a little time. Great crowd by Antonio Williams, who, again, continues to impress as a true freshman. His level of understanding on route running and gaining leverage on a defender, that was beautifully done by Antonio Williams. Klubnik an immediate spark. He's three for three. After Uyunglele really went two for five. And they were largely short throws. Now showing his running ability. And he got stood up at the seven-yard line, short of the first down. Giovanni Biggers made the tackle. He's got some juice now. There's no question about it. When you get off to a good start, he hit his first couple of passes. He looked sharp. He looked ready. And right now, he's got some bounce in the step, too. He's got his team here at the North Carolina goal line. Seven play of the drive. Pitched out to Shipley. Turning the corner. Lunging for the pylon. Touchdown. Clemson really likes that play where they kind of, it's a, it's a delayed pitch. Here's Shipley diving for the pylon. Does he step out first? first. Yeah. Yeah. Looked like he stepped out before he reached that ball to pylon. Beautiful block by Davis Allen, number 84. In the best blocking tight end that they've had here at Clemson. Progressive pylon cam, you can see right there. He's out of bounds before the lunge for the pylon. Well, the left foot out the and then the pylon. Under further review. So this will be overturned almost certainly by Keith Roden. In the replay booth. Official score deeming that a pass play. Ball went forward. Would have been his first receiving touchdown of the season. This play by Power Echols, one of the inside linebackers from North Carolina. Just hustle over there, make a play on the sideline. Force him out of bounds and live to play another play here. I think the officials already know. Yeah that the ball's going to be spotted short of the goal line. Well, in your options here, if you want to run, you've got Maffa, who is the more powerful guy, or the bigger back, and Shipley, who scores a lot of touchdowns. Either one is a good option here. We saw a, a play like that in the game earlier today with TCU, a ball that should have been spotted inside the one-yard yeah, envelope. That's closer forever. Than it they got it wrong. And that could have been a very big play. After further review, the runner's left foot was out of bounds with the ball at the one half yard line. Football, first and goal, that spot. Yeah, that ball is just a few inches away from the goal line. I still think Max Duggan in that situation needed to carry the ball. One of the, one of the two there. He single handedly dropped them back into the game didn't get the ball. That guy would have willed his way into the end zone. So it's inside the one. Shipley has 14 rushing touchdowns. And that is second the ACC. And Israel Abanakanda Pitt, who had a great year. 20 rushing scores. Shipley turned back. Loss of a yard or so on the play. The North Carolina defense been under siege most of the year. They got off to a terrible start. They were decimated by injuries. They have six starters out tonight. And yet they've improved lately, adjusting to Gene Chiswick's system. Gene Chiswick was honest yesterday. He said, I've improved yeah. as the season's gone along, too. But I'm still a work in progress with this group. Shipley again, the running back. With Klubnik under center. Play fake. Allen is wide open. Touchdown. Well, 
Rudnick does a beautiful job, but watch the block by Will Shipley just to give his quarterback time to allow Davis Allen to get to the back of the end zone. Gets enough of a block to give time to the quarterback and a beautiful touch pass. That's where you throw. You throw to that back pylon where either your guy can catch it or nobody can catch it. And what a first possession for Cade Club to move his team right down the field in impressive fashion. Two, three and outs with Uli Angelove. They never even had a third down on this drive. Engineered by Klubnik. BT Potter drills the extra point. The problem is not with your set. A little lighting situation here. You know, and now, I mean, the question is for Dabo Sweeney and Brandon Streeter, do you stay with Klubnik? I mean, just based on what we've seen so far, I don't know that you take him out of the game right now. Or do you go back to DJ? If, if you don't go back to DJ, what's that going to do to his confidence if you need him at some other point in the game? It's a tricky decision right now because that drive was impressive for the young quarterback. In the background, you know, in this day and age, there's chatter about everything. Right? There's websites and social media and everything. But there's been a lot of talk that this might be it for DJ Uyunglele. At Clemson, he's going to graduate in December in three years. Some speculation he might go somewhere else. Some that he might go on to the NFL. I think you see the skill set, the size, but based on the body of work, it's hard to imagine he'd be a high draft choice. Five-star recruit. And Klumpnik, a top recruit as well. Well, he got off to a different start than DJ. Hit his first couple passes. And then they did a nice job fixing the run, the quarterback run. And you could just tell he brought a little juice to the offense. Here was the touchdown pass. Beautiful place to put the football to Davis Allen. You know, the other thing, the reality of college football now, in the case of a guy like Kate Clark, it's hard to keep backup quarterbacks on your team now high-profile, four- or five-star guys, and they're not playing early in their career. They're looking for someone else to go as well. From the 25, Omarion Hampton, talented true freshman running back. Stumbled ahead for a couple. Hampton, one of their top three groups out of high school last year, Clayton, North Carolina. Four-star recruit. Well, they missed the handoff. And Clemson has the football. Well, Hampton just into the game. Didn't make the connection with May and Ruka Roro Row has the ball back for the Tigers. It's kind of hard to tell who that's really on. The, the running back puts his arms up. The quarterback's job is to put the ball in the belly of the back. And it looked like May was maybe a little hesitant whether to give it to him or keep it. And the worst case scenario happened, which was the ball ended up on the ground. It's a defense that's been, or this team that's been on the wrong side of the turnover margin for the last five games. Gets a big one right there. Uh, they just had it handed to them. The Tigers will take it. Set up in a 7-7 game now at the 23. Mafa, left-handed pass back to Klubnik. Cade Klubnik inside the 10 and shoved out of bounds. Cedric Gray saved the touchdown. Well, who knew Phil Mafa was a left-handed thrower? And they run the, the sweep to the left. He tosses it back to Klubnik. And you see the speed and athleticism, well-conceived, well-designed, and well-executed play right after the turnover called by Brandon Street. Nineteen-yard play. First and goal, final minute of the opening quarter. Clemson trying to take the lead, and they do. Phil Maffa, the touchdown from four yards out.
the season for Mafa. Sophomore from Loganville, Georgia. Big block by Mitchell Mays, the new starting left guard in there for Clemson, replacing the injured Marcus Tate. Set up by their defense and the mishandled football between May and his freshman tailback. It's on the ground. A row, a row comes away with it. And then a little trickery play on the first play after the change of possession. Back to Klubnik and then Mafa behind excellent blocking up front gets another touchdown on the board for Clemson. They take advantage of the turnover in impressive fashion. They mentioned the last five games they've lost the turnover margin. 15 turnovers in the last five games. They've gone three and two. The first seven games of the year, only five turnovers combined. Fewest through seven games since 2005. It's amazing yeah. how much it changed, and it really helped wreck their season. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of statistics in football that you can manipulate to say a lot of different things, but turnover margin is usually pretty right on. Those first seven games, they were plus six. The last five, they've been minus eight. Coming into the day, uh, that's not a good formula for success. Potter, Potter's kickoff is a touchback. Tomorrow, we'll finally get the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups. There's a Fiesta Bowl and Peach Bowls. They'll be played on New Year's Eve on ESPN. Recently, the guys will also unveil all the New Year's Six Bowl games. Final top 25 rankings. It's a four-hour special. All starting at noon, right after Sunday, and then countdown to the ESPN and the app. Interesting to see what happens with TCU. I, I, I still think that they deserve to be in. I agree 100%. I think their body of work, their resume was impressive, and what they did today was valiant against a really good Kansas State team. It's a good Big 12 conference. They beat five ranked teams. And the magic just ran out today. That looked like it was going to be another incredible comeback. Yeah, the only question, assuming Michigan wins tonight in the Big Ten, is. Is it going to be an Ohio State-Michigan rematch? Or is Ohio State going to go to three? TCU four or vice versa? The six-yard play to Downs. It's a first down carry for Elijah Green. Jalen Phillips is playing tonight. He's been banged up lately. Made the tackle, and that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. Very entertaining. Back of America Stadium, the home of the Carolina Panthers of the NFL. ESPN's presentation of celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Good year, more driven. Part of North Carolina's success on the road this season. They were 6 and 0 oh, away from Chapel Hill. The year before on the road, right? Well, that's a big turnaround. There's Elijah Green on first and 10, running for eight near midfield. Their ability to run the football so far in this game has been a little bit of a surprise. Joe Longo told us, and so did Mac Brown, says when we play better competition, our offensive line kind of gets up for it. They seem to play their best. Jack McNell Jr., the new offensive line coach, he and Longo were together at Old Miss, reunited here. Those guys up front are off to a pretty good start tonight against this Clemson front. They have some veterans particularly on the left side of the offensive line. Drake May slides down, has the first down to do Clemson territory. They have a lot of pass plays in their offense where it's not necessarily a called quarterback draw, but he has the option to run quarterback draw if they drop a lot of guys in coverage. It's a good feel for that. May sacked back at midfield. Aaron Carter, first contact. Now, Barrett Carter is the guy who got there, and Kamari Morales, the tight end, just didn't see him. He's here. He's going to come through this hole. Now watch Morales. He's there to pick up the blitzer, but he loses sight of him. He helps out the back, and he totally whiffed on Barrett Carter. That's what he was staying in there to do, was to block that blitzing linebacker. Rebel Sweeney raves about Barrett Carter. So he's one of the best football players in my 20 years at Clemson. His head coach and an assistant coach. 
second and 14. Josh Downs trying to maneuver. Tackled by his high school teammate. Visit with Josh Downs last night. He mentioned that he and Barrett Carter played together. It must have been a pretty good high school team in Georgia. North Gwinnett High School. If Carter used to cover in practice, and you can't cover me, don't worry, you're not going to have to do that in college. He said, I could cover anybody, even if I'm a linebacker. Downs breaks the tackle and has the first down. Jalen Phillips couldn't get him on the ground, and Barrett Carter, his old teammate, did. Uh, Jalen Phillips a little banged up, as a lot of guys are at this point in the season. He's in position to make the tackle short of the first down, but not able to wrap up Josh Downs. Our heels led seven to nothing, now down by seven. And Elijah Green chopped down by Andrew Makuba. <laughs> Old high school teammates. I think one of the things that Dabo loves about Barrett Carter is his versatility. He can blitz, he can cover the pass game, he can be tough against the run. He is very versatile in what he can do with that linebacker position. He's the sophomore from Sewanee, Georgia. He's 6'1", 225. Dabble said he could play anywhere. Running back, wide receiver, Drake May ducks down at the 30-yard line with K.J. Henry there for Clemson. There's nowhere to go with the football. Good coverage. It was only a four-man rush that time by Clemson, but Drake May nowhere to go with it. them at 38 and they are trying to get to that 40 mark. If they do that, it'll be nine years in a row. But the defense is recorded. They're the only team this is year nine of the college football playoff format. They're the only team that's had 40 sacks or more in each of the first day. They crowded Josh Downs. And if he was not taken down by Makuma, that was likely a touchdown. They do get the first down at the 20 yard line. Single coverage, Downs with a nice route and a perfect place for the football, and you're right. There's nobody behind Josh Downs. If Makuba doesn't make that tackle, it's a North Carolina touchdown. And you see, when Drake May has time, I mean, he, does, he has vision, he has excellent field vision, he's accurate, he can make throws rolling out left or right. Poised, very poised, very poised. Has great instincts of when to run also. And a stoppage in play here. UNC takes its first time out of the half. A North Carolina timeout. 10.35 to go until halftime at the subway. ACC champion May in North Carolina trying to win the school's sixth ACC football title, their first since 1980, when their star player was Lawrence Taylor. They're down 14 to 7, but on the move. First and 10 at the Clemson 20. Drake May hit as he throws, and it falls incomplete in the end zone. Sheridan Jones was a blitzer who got to Drake May. Yeah, they brought pressure off the short side. Sheridan Jones is going to come into your screen. Drake May knows that he's coming free and just tries to get rid of the football. Well designed corner blitz. When it comes from the short side of the field, he doesn't have his part to get to the quarterback force the ball to be thrown away by May. We're on Kobe Pesor on late. And they did have two tight ends and 12 personnel, and they wanted to take one of those guys out and bring another receiver in. That's to allow the substitute, and now the play clock is running off. The officials are going to talk about this. UNC takes its second time out of the half. Well, I think it's really on Mac Brown and his coaches. Yeah. They waited a long time to make that late substitution. Clemson was afforded the opportunity to substitute as well. Some dollars in tuition from Dr. Pepper. Sean Antoine Green has only been targeted one time so far tonight. No catches. One of their best in winning one-on-one -on -one matchups is lined up against Nate Wiggins, who has really come a long way for this Clemson pass defense over the course of the year. But if, if he stays single, this might be a place for Drake May to take a shot at Antoine Green. 12-play 
wanted to drive. They've held the ball for more than five minutes. Second and ten at the Clemson 20. May, far sideline, right on target pot. Josh Downs with an eight-yard play. May now five out of six on this drive. And a lot more pressure from Wes Goodwin, the defensive coordinator. They started out the game rushing three, dropping eight. They are trying to heat it up a little bit more on Drake May. And so far, the North Carolina offensive line and backs are doing a pretty good job keeping it clean. Third and two could be four down country. They don't get it here. Mac Brown has gone for a lot of fourth downs. May flushed by a blitzing linebacker, Jeremiah Trotter. Now yanked down by Trenton Simpson, and they get a flag likely for a horse collar. Yeah, Simpson is saying he just had the jersey and not up around the neck. He definitely slung Drake May to the ground, and Drake May has been able to outrun a lot of guys, but Simpson showed great speed laterally. Face mask, or was it around the collar? It's a face mask against May was the signal by the referee Roach for twisting Simpson's headgear around. the decision. Correction. Hubs has decided to accept the penalty. It'll be 15 yards. They're down. Well, let's quickly bring in our referee, Matt Austin. You think they got that right? I, I do, Sean. It's an unusual call to have it go on the offense like that. But as you said, he did grab the face mask and he did twist and pull it. That's a good call. As far as the horse collar, it's got to be the side uh, of the jersey or the back. And this was actually more close to the front. Uh, and it didn't danger his legs by snapping it down backwards. So I think they did get this right. Yeah, I think Drake May was just trying to stiff arm. And he's actually lucky that he didn't hurt a finger by getting his hand caught in the face mask. It was not his throwing hand. It was his left hand. But an unusual play. Third and long now. Still in field goal range. Now timeout called by Clemson. Clemson still doesn't the like the call. The pro Tar Heel fans. Mac Brown now 71 years old. Still fiery as you can see. Second stint as head coach at the University of North Carolina year four. Season, hoping to make it 10. They're still in the top 25. They're number 23. Here's the top 10 as of earlier this week. Brought to you by AT&T 5G. Georgia certainly going to remain number one. Yeah. And that gets interesting. Michigan wins against Purdue. You'd have to think they're a lock for number two as well. What do you think is going to transpire thereafter? Yeah, well, I think Ohio State will move up. It's just a matter of, and I think TC will stay in the top four. My, my biggest question, I think everybody's question, is who will be three and who will be four? How will it shape up? Well, hard to punish TC, in my opinion, for playing in a championship game, losing in overtime when they, you know, they were an inch away from taking a touchdown lead in overtime. And, and you know, it's kind of something wrong with the system if a team can benefit from staying at home, like Ohio State. week we talked about a path to the playoff at Clemson and it, it was really right there for them. Trying to win the conference title. May beautiful throw and a diving catch by Antoine Green. They convert on third and 17. Well this was a crazy cushion out here. I mean there's pressure. Drake May just drifts a little bit away from Brzee but way too much cushion by Sheridan Jones. I mean it's that's easy. It's third and 17 and he was about yards off the receiver and North Carolina able to convert on third and very long and hurt by balls down the field for a lot of the year in that Clemson secondary first and goal May zings one incomplete up 
at the hand of Antoine Green. Well, he was open, too. He was working on Wiggins that time. There was a little bit of a cushion there and just a little miscommunication. May thinking his receiver was going to continue inside, and Antoine Green kind of held up right there in between defenders. 15th play of the drive for Drake May in the Tar Heel offense. Six out of eight on this sequence. 12 out of 17 for the game. And he scored their touchdown on the ground. Handed it off to Green, who got dropped for a loss. Behind the line of scrimmage by Trenton Simpson, another Charlotte native back in his hometown. Yeah, these linebackers are all coming in here. A lot of pressure around the line of scrimmage. Trotter's blitzing, Simpson's blitzing, and they get behind the line of scrimmage and get the play. Simpson and Drake May played seven on seven together as kids here in the Charlotte area. Drake May said Simpson was a running back and he was a beast. This linebacker semifinalist for the Buckus Award. On third down and goal from the 14th. They converted third and 17 to the end zone and incomplete. Broken up by Nate Wiggins. It was intended for Antoine Green. He's their best in one on one situations, and he had single coverage on Wiggins. No safety help. Drake May gave him a shot. The only question was the contact a little early before the ball got there, but pretty well played by Nate Wiggins, who again, when we saw him against Wake Forest, he struggled. And he showed immaturity, he had bad eyes, and he has continued to get better and better, playing at a much different level now in that second game. It's Noah Burnett, a 31-yard field goal. teams hurt Clemson a week ago in their loss to South Carolina. Big play here. Nobody gets a piece of them. That's the tight end John Copenhaver, 84, 81, does not get any piece of the outside guy. And Nate Wiggins able to use that length and that long body and get in there and block the field goal. Now you tell the Ed guy on the field goal, he's got to kind of step inside and reach outside. He's got to be able to get a piece of two guys. He only got one. So it seemed that Burnett was a little slow yeah. getting to the ball off a shaky week last week. In fact, missed one in the second overtime that ended the game. Joseph Ngana. Tackled by Marcus Allen, another true freshman. Well, I mean, the operation seemed okay. They just didn't get enough peace. Yeah, they needed a bigger of piece Wiggins. of Wiggins. I do think Burnett, they would want him, the coaches, to speed it up a little bit. On second and one. And nine. First down, Shipley again. That's a discouraging drive if you're North Carolina. What a stop by Clemson. I mean, they had the ball, they moved it, they had a lot of plays. Get down in there. They converted a couple big third down plays and they come away with nothing. And still down seven on the scoreboard. 17 play drive. Will Shipley again to the 31. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, time now for our Dr. Pepper Fansville Studio update. Big Ten Championship and uh-oh, Borg, watch out for Purdue. Purdue in front of the line of scrimmage camp being physical with Michigan. Devin Mockaby going in. They're up 10-7 against Michigan, Dan. Big score for Michigan on the goal line driving now. Sean, Todd, Molly, back to you. All right. Spoiler makers. <laughs> a rough weekend for the teams that were in the top four and are playing in championship games. Deep ball! This ball to Cole Turner. 
DeAndre Boykins, number 16, the star nickelback, was the guy in coverage. Turner is not even on our charts, no, and he just made a huge play. The chart. And he would have had a We're touchdown if he had staggered the, the ground. Zone. That plays under further review. 68 yards from Cade Klubnick to Cole Turner. Longest pass play all season for Clemson. What a beautiful throw. Deep over the outside shoulder. Turner had some separation. Here's a look from the progressive pylon cam as he's stumbling towards the end zone. You can see the elbow is down to the forearm is down before the ball crosses the plane. What an effort and what a throw. You know, if you're North Carolina, you got to figure, okay, if this guy's in the game, we don't even have him on our depth chart. It can't be a pass, right? It's got to be a run if he's in it wide out. Next thing you know, they're throwing it over your head. Cole Turner had played in eight snaps all year. One game. All of them were against Miami. And there's one-sided win, second to last game of the regular season. Looking to see if he stepped out. He clearly didn't get into the end zone. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It'll be first and goal, the half yard line. My goodness. <laughs> We've seen a couple interesting things. He's the brother of Nolan Turner, longtime standout of the secondary. Son of Kevin Turner. Teammate at Dabo Sweeney at Alabama. So they mark it inside the one. Second catch of the season and the second of his career. And he sets them up to take a two touchdown lead with Shipley, the running back. A high snap handled by Klumnik. He keeps and walks in. They all went for the fake to Shipley. This was, in essence, a 14-point swing and turnaround. North Carolina poised to tie the game up in scoring territory. Clemson gets it, blocks the field goal, gets the long throw, and then Klubnik pays it off by calling his own number. Nice fake, patient with the fake, and an easy touchdown for Kate Klubnik. Well, they had two possessions with D.J. Uyunglele, two, three, and outs. Klubnik came in, three possessions and three touchdowns, and they still haven't even had to play a third down. E.T. Potter, the extra point. Set up by the blocked field goal. Yeah. Nate Wiggins. Nate Wiggins made a play on third down to force the incompletion, got the block, and then out of nowhere, Cole Turner. Freshman from Vestavia Hills, Alabama. In Charlotte, Bank of America Stadium. 18th edition of the ACC championship game. 12th time it's been played here in Charlotte. Played here at least for 2030. It's a touchback, and here's Molly. Well, Sean, a switch has been flipped on Clemson's sidelines since Kane Klumnick came in at quarterback. Defensive players were looking at each other, shocked and excited, saying, wow, he is really good. And Klumnick telling his teammates, we're just getting started. And to DJ Uyunglele's credit, he's the first guy congratulating Klumnick, talking him through coverages on the sideline and being a great teammate. But make no mistake, Kane Klumnick is now the guy that everyone is looking to on this sideline. Uh, you know, it's, it's always a tough situation, whether you're the starter, whether you're the backup, when there's a change like this, but he definitely has some juice right now, and the whole team is feeding off of him. The two young quarterbacks with glittering resumes, long pass, Josh Downs got tangled up with Andrew Makuba. There's going to be a penalty here against the safety. Again, Clemson is continuing now to try to bring pressure on Drake May. They started out the game trying to block coverage. Defense number one. Ball being placed in the spot of the foul automatic. First 
trade-off if you're bringing pressure is you're going to have isolated situations for your defensive backs, and that's what Makuba found himself in. One-on-one -on -one against Josh Downs. Good pressure by Tyler Davis. But the penalty uh, helps out North Carolina on that one. From the 35, May takes off running. He's flushed. He just takes off running. He got four. The difference is the speed of this Clemson defense, though. That looked like it was going to be open for more yards, but Trent Simpson, who's now taking himself out of the game, showed great lateral movement and making the tackle. T.J. Dudley now a true freshman in his place. Elijah Green off left tackle for very little to the 40. It'll be third down and five. Tyler Davis made the tackle. He was first team all ACC this year, as was Miles Murphy. And I think you know, of all the highly touted defensive linemen, it's Murphy whose up and down season is most mysterious and frustrating to the Clemson coaches. Yeah, I mean, when he wants to go, he's almost unblockable. But there are times when he, you don't know that he's out there at all. Tyler Davis is more steady, workmanlike. There's pressure again. May had to pull it down once, still put it on target. The ball comes out after Green hit the ground, and it's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. Incomplete, or was he down when the ball came out? I thought the official running in from the far sideline was saying incomplete. Apparently, he's going to call a catch well, and then it was down. A completed catch for a first down. Wiggins with some early contact there as well. Yeah, I think that's a catch, and the ball just got ripped out when he was on the ground. I agree. I think the officials got it right. That's why they're here. They're the best officials in the ACC. have earned the opportunity to officiate the championship game. Dabo agrees. Ruling on the field of the first down. Completed catches under further review. Still fire in the belly of Mac Brown. Timeout on Green. Mac Brown didn't like when they went to the replay, but he's happy with the result. His team down by 14. Drake May over the middle, caught, spinning away, Josh Downs inside the 30. And out of the 26-yard line of Clemson. Nice little wrinkle that time by Phil Longo. He moved the quarterback by design out of the pocket to the left. He threw back to Downs, and Downs changed his direction. He's coming from right to left. And as soon as he caught it, he reversed field and fooled the defender and added about 12 more yards to that play just by a little quick, instinctive move to change direction. Big half for Josh Downs. They've targeted seven times. They've completed all seven. 77 yards. 17-play drive last time that resulted in a blocked field goal. Elijah Green weaves down inside the 16 with another Tar Heel first down. Really important drive right here for North Carolina. Remember, they won the toss and deferred, so they'll get the ball first to start the third quarter. They go with tempo. And Green inside the 13-yard line. Stop made by Barrett Carter. you got to be thinking touchdown here. You, you try to field goal the last time. You're already down two touchdowns. He's got to be creative and aggressive here, but first and foremost, he's got to make sure his quarterback is protected. They have moved the ball. They have 209 yards of offense. They've had the ball almost twice as long as Clemson. A costly turnover and a blocked field goal. That really hurt North Carolina in this first half. Second and eight. Run fake and the pass. Gavin Blackwell. And I said you got to be creative, and that was creative. It was a different-looking play. They definitely sold the run fake, 
And then he just raised up and threw, and it kind of froze the Clemson defense. And they got the first down. So it's first and goal. And Mac Brown, a master of managing the clock. This is smart. You'll take your time. Yep. You don't want to leave Clemson much time. From the three, first and goal. Pressure brought. And Green is in trouble and dropped. Back at the seven-yard line by Trenton Simpson. Barrett Carter was there and Trenton Simpson. Again, these two outside linebackers are so quick, so aggressive. Both behind the line of scrimmage and lost yardage that time for North Carolina. Injured player, I believe it's K.J. Henry. And here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, we hope KJ's okay. Capital One, a halftime report just minutes away. Dan Mullen, Booger McFarland, Kevin Nagani here. You know, K Clubnick, a completely different team when he's on the field for Clemson. And what took him down so long to put him in the game? And DJ clearly doesn't have any confidence, evident by that first throw where he bounced it to the receiver. Yeah, you just see it right from the beginning. It yeah. wasn't going to be his night. And Drake May, right now, we got to see how he responds because they're having more success pressuring him yes. than dropping everybody yes. into coverage. They need to keep coming after him. Big Ten championship game still going on right now in the first half. Michigan up by only four highlights coming your way. Sean, back to you. Thank you very much. Teams three and four in the current college football playoff rankings played in championship games and lost. Yep. TCU right. and USC. Georgia a winner in the SEC championship. Michigan trying to avoid having it be three losses for teams to the top four in the title games this weekend. Congratulations to Kansas State and Utah. Capping a fine season in both cases. Again, they're letting the clock go down. The reason why Matt Brown's won 274 games. That shoulder throw broke it up. Wow, Wiggins, what a play. What a half he's having. It was Antoine Green, the target again. This is a good throw. I mean, it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's a good throw. He's got the ball, and Wiggins rips it out. Antoine Green is just not able to secure the catch. He has both hands on the football, and Wiggins rips it out. And they are challenging one another. Right now, I'd say Wiggins is having the better of them. Four-star recruit out of Atlanta, originally committed to LSU. He is mature. As the season's gone along, Elijah Green, the running back, on third and goal. May looked like a design run after the fake, and Jeremiah Trotter tripped him up. Well, Jeremiah Trotter was coming on a blitz, and the left guard, Ed Montalus, doesn't get enough of a piece of him. Here's Trotter. Watch the left guard. All he's got to do is just kind of get a shoulder on. And he's, he's open to the, the end zone. One minute, 23 seconds. One, two, three. But the right Thank guard you. missed the block. And Trotter was able to make the play. So now the adventure, you know, Noah Burnett was having a nice year. He had missed only two all season prior to last week. But went two out of four against NC State. And had his first attempt blocked here tonight by Nate Wiggins. They did send the field goal team out. Clemson used a timeout, trying to save some time for another offensive possession with the offensive rolling with Kate Plumnick at the helm. Well, the last time they were down here, they came away with no points. They'll try another field goal, but they had a touchdown right there. And if the left guard gets a piece of the blitzing linebacker, there's nobody else in front of Drake May in the end zone. Burnett now 12 out of 17. Three of the five misses have been in the last two games. Here's Wiggins again, same spot. They better block him. And Burnett might want to be a little speedier to the ball. No problem that time. Good from 25 yards for the sophomore from Raleigh. A big play earlier in the year. He kicked the game winning field goal from 33 yards late in their two point win at Wake Forest, which is a game which they clinched the coastal division. Let's head down to the sidelines. Here's Paul. Well, 
Sean, this Tar Heels team is inspired by something much bigger than football. In practice this week, head coach Matt Brown announced that wide receiver Ty Lee Craft received the Disney Spirit Award this year, given to the most inspirational figure in college football. In March, Kraft was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer, and during aggressive chemotherapy treatments and the battle for his life, he didn't miss a practice, meeting, or game, and even visits with other cancer patients weekly at UNC's Cancer Center. And Kraft was running around in pregame warm-ups, firing up his teammates. He's very involved with this team, and he told us he finished his last round of chemo two weeks ago. He'll have scans December 9th to find out if he's in the clear, but he told us he feels great, and this team has really helped him get through his toughest time. Time, Sean. And they have learned from his toughness. Mac yeah. Brown said there are times he came straight from chemo to practice and he was ill and was still there to support his teammates. Please pray for him. What a nice young man. We really enjoyed the visit. His mom, September, is here tonight. And those scans, everybody will be on pins and needles waiting for the results. He very nearly died uh, shortly after he was diagnosed. And still hoping to come back and play someday. There is the information. Remember, 100% of your donation goes to cancer research. V.org slash donate. You know, the employee positions in the V Foundation are in doubt. They're, those are people already paid by people who have donated money. So everything that you give goes straight to the cause. There is Ty Lee's mom. So here's Klumnik setting up a screen on first down. And Will Shipley runs out, of time, runs out of bounds to save some time. They have one timeout left. They have a minute 14. Well, I'd say if you're Brandon Streeter, you feel pretty good about turning your young quarterback loose because he's been really confident. He's been sharp. He's been accurate. I think you, you try to be a little aggressive here. That was a good first down call with the screen to Shipley. You make the first down right away here and you get a little more aggressive. Well, the eight for eight passing now. Takes off running. Broke away from Miles Murphy. Each team has a Miles Murphy on the defensive line. And Will Hardy made the play, but it's another first down for Clemson. Clock stop for a moment to move the chains. They have B.T. Potter, one of the strongest legs in the country, warming up. Good catch on a ball behind him by Joseph Ngata. Right to midfield with another first down. So Klubnik still perfect. Nine for nine for 145 and a touchdown. And he has run for a score as well. Look one way, wide receiver screen to Ngata. That is a tough play for them. Will they use the last timeout? Marcus Allen made the tackle. Dabo electing not to use it here, and he wants them to hurry up. Potter has a very strong leg, probably not the in field goal range as they get that right there. But Antonio Williams couldn't hang on. Was a little bit high, but a catchable pass nonetheless. Klubnik did a nice job of just waiting until something opened, and the normally sure-handed Antonio Williams is not able to bring that one in. With the one timeout, if you can throw this thing anywhere on the field, try to get the first down, the, the clock will stop until they move the change. If you do get a first down, you can even spike it and save that timeout if you want. Potter's 52, but he's got enough leg to make one from longer than that. Klubnik running, has the first down and a lot more. Comfortably in field goal range, he got out of bounds with 11 seconds to go. What a half for Kate Klubnik. We talked about the poise of young Drake May. This is poise here, too. Eyes downfield for as long as he possibly could. Got a nice block by Shipley at the end of the play. But the right decision to take off and to get out of bounds with the presence of mind. So, I'll tell you what, he has done nothing wrong in this first half. Just tuning in, DJ Uyunglele started the first two series with both three and outs. 
Lumpkin replaced him. Lumpkin throwing into single coverage. Has and got him. And it's well played by legend Cavazos. Who's in for the injured Storm Duck. A transfer from Ohio State. There's a flag down. Back near the line of scrimmage along the near sideline. Well, he was beat. The ball was a little bit underthrown, and that's why Cavazos was able to catch up and make the play on the ball. Davis Allen obviously is normally an eligible receiver, but because of the formation, here he is right here. Because this receiver is on the line of scrimmage and not off, he's covered and he's not able to go downfield. So it's all for naught, but the ball was underthrown by Klubnik. That enabled the defender to make a play. So this will be a 52-yard try for Potter, which would match his career long. He's made eight career field goals of over 50 yards, most in Clemson history. And a timeout call by Carolina. UNC takes its final timeout of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Potter, by the way, if he makes this field goal, will make history as 99 points for the season. If he makes this, it's 102. He'd be the first player in ACC history to have four seasons of 100 points or more. Here's a look at tonight's fighting spirit moment brought to you by Modelo. And boy, did Klubnik bring this fighting spirit the minute he entered the game. Yeah, he really did. Doing a little bit of everything. Hit his first several of well, all of his passes to the last one. A perfect throw of the football. Moving in the pocket. Got the touchdown to Davis Allen. A little trick play with the throwback to the quarterback. Just his presence and the juice that he brought, not just to the offense, but to the entire Clemson team and sideline, as Molly reported. And this run, this heads up run to get him into sure field goal range. Well done. Hey, From 52. Good! His ninth field goal of 50 plus. His fourth 100-point season, and he has scored in 53 straight games, tying the school record held by Chandler Catanzaro back in 2010 to 2013, and he went on to kick in the NFL. It's a homecoming for Potter, the fifth-year senior, who's from just across the border in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Here's Molly. Sean, I'm trying to catch up with Coach, and here he is. Coach, Coach Sweeney, what went into your decision to make the change at quarter? Well, this beautiful touchdown pass to Davis Allen in the back of the end zone just made good decisions, even caught a pass in the first half and a little trick play that led to another score. He was uh, everything. Ran a touchdown, caught a pass, threw a touchdown, and then right before the half, this was a, a great play, just knowing when to run, get out of bounds, set up the field goal right before the end of the half, and uh, he just couldn't play any better than Cade Klubnik did in that no, first he couldn't. half. He was in for four possessions, three touchdowns, one field goal, and the field goal might have been because they ran out of time. Yeah. He was in for 22 plays, Todd. They only got to third down once. That's how good they were, and on that third down, he ran for 16 yards. As Dabo said to, Dabo said to Molly at the half, they plan to get Klubnik in anyway, yeah. but I think as bad as DJ was, that sped up that plan a little bit. I don't know that they plan to do it the way they did, but when he came in and played as well as he did, there was no going back at that point. Klubnik, 10 out of 11, passing for a touchdown, 149 yards. He ran four times for 32 yards and a touchdown. BT Potter kicks off. It'll be a touchback. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, UNC's head coach Mac Brown said Clemson's change at quarterback absolutely changed everything in this game because they knew how to affect DJ Uyunglele and took away his confidence, but they're still figuring out how to take away Cade Klubnik's confidence. He said, we're going to have to light him up, blitz him, and get after him to win this game. And offensively, he said on this drive, they need to score to put the pressure on Clemson. And he told his team, don't look at the score, just get this game into the fourth quarter and ship away, and you can still win this. I think the frustration for Matt Brown, the Tar Heels, they have those two long drives 
in the first half back to back that gained 128 yards they had the ball for almost 11 minutes 28 plays on the two drives and got only three points one field goal after one was blocked Elijah Green gain of about four Drake May looked like uh, his elbow was bothering him as he was warming up for the start of the second half. He was 15 for 22 in the first half. They lost a fumble on a missed exchange with Amarian Hampton, the running back. That was costly. He rushed for 17 yards on nine carries, scored their only touchdown. On second down, trying to run away again and he cannot escape from Jeremiah Trotter. The, the speed of these three linebackers is just different for Drake May tonight with Clemson because he's been doing those kind of things and making those decisions to run all season. It looks like he's got space, but from inside out, Jeremiah Trotter checks him down. Here's third down and eight. Michael Roach, the referee. Play of game, disconcerting signals. Defense number one, with your clapping signal. Five yard penalty, third down. It looked like Awesome Richards jumped the left end of the offensive line, but it was the disconcerting signals from Makuba, apparently, that caused that. See that called that often, but the gift for North Carolina, third, much more manageable. Great Bay won't have to hold the ball as long on this play. Six out of nine on third down in the first half. Quick pass, caught, downs, spins for a few more, but didn't get completely away from Makuba, who'll be credited with the tackle. But it's a first down for Carolina on the eighth catch of the game for Josh Downs. And again, how big was that penalty? That's a quick throw right out in the flat to Josh Downs. You don't have to hold it a long time if you're Drake May. Comes in with three sacks of the quarterback in that first half. A lot more pressure packages by Wes Goodwin's defense as that game went on in the first half. To the play fake. May hit as he throws up for grabs and nearly intercepted. Intended for downs, and it was Wade Woodass in coverage. Well, they got good pressure, collapsed the pocket. It's Brzee who's going to come from this side. They've even got a tight end there to kind of be able to help. He's working on the right tackle, Spencer Rollin. He gets there and puts the hit. But Brzee was being held as well. Pretty good job by Josh Downs getting a hand in there. Otherwise, it's probably intercepted. Such a good receiver, Josh Downs. Dad Gary, fine running back at NC State, played in the NFL. And his uncle is Dre Bly, one of the great players in North Carolina history, now on their coaching staff. May forced to throw it away. There's Brian Brzee again. He's cranking it up here a little bit. He went outside the play before. This time he spun back inside, showing a different move. And uh, right now, Spencer Rollins has got his hands full. He's out. K.J. Henry has taken his place. Should mention also, Clemson has a guy back now to start the second half. R.J. Mickens, one of their starting safeties, had to sit out the first half because of a targeting foul in the last game. This is him right here, number nine, lined up over the slot. Third down and ten. May jump pass on target. And a big tackle made by Sheridan Jones. And it looked like he got Antoine Green down just short of the line to gain, and he did. So it'll be fourth down and one and a decision for Mac Brown here very early in the third quarter. He's gone for it a lot on fourth down. He said that's today's football. 
with a tilt toward analytics, and he has adapted with the times. They've gone for 30 times on fourth down. They've made 21. 70% is 15th best in the country out of 131. Wasn't ready for the snap. That's going to be a penalty. Not sure what Corey Gaynor, the center, if he heard something or what. False start on the offense. On all 11 plays got set. I got penalty with that. Well, now do you go for it? I don't know if you do now. I think you got to punt the ball yep, now. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, Drake May, after the whistle, was gesturing at Mike Brooks, referee, and clapping as if to say there were disconcerting signals coming again. Well, something affected Corey Gaynor because he snapped it before anybody was ready. Bad transfer from Miami. There's Ben Kiernan on the punt. Antonio Williams back deep. Kiernan came over. 15 from Ireland almost took too long. A.J. Henry very nearly blocked it. Takes a good bounce for the heels. Well, the offense coming back out, it was Brian Brzee, a big force on the defense on that last series. And what an awful year it's been for Brian, his family. Most of you know he lost his 15-year-old sister, Ella, back in mid-September to brain cancer. And Shortly after she passed away, Brian Brzee started having health issues himself, and for several days they didn't know what it was. You can imagine how alarmed they were. It turned out to be a kidney infection. He gained 45 pounds because he couldn't expel water from his body, and when they figured it out, he lost the 45 pounds. The last two weeks he's been battling strep throat. What an impressive young man. And, you know, we mentioned it's V-Week. And all of us have been affected by it, and there are folks on both sides, as we mentioned tonight, who have lost loved ones recently or have loved ones still in the battle. You know, we asked him, you know, what, what message would you want us to pass along that has been strength for you and your family? And he just said, make sure you tell the people you love that you love them. Well, they had the ball fly out of his hand, slip as he wanted to throw to the right. They said, make sure you never know if you're even going to have tomorrow. Make sure the people around you know how much you love them. And certainly Ella knew. Dad, Rich, and Mom, Megan, and sisters, Kendall, and Bailey from the Clemson football program, which really embraced Ella and rallied around her and supported her in her fight. V.org slash donate is where you can go. Z family, as you saw here tonight. Third down and 11. Cade Plumnick in trouble and dropped back at the 16-yard line by Jacoby Cowan. Well, who's a backup ordinarily, sorry, Todd, thrust into action because of those injuries to some starters ahead of him. Here's one of the changes. Ra-Ra Dilworth is in here in the dime. He's going to be spying the quarterback. Watch, he fakes rush. Now he spies, and he's responsible for Kate Klubnick. That's one little wrinkle, one little change that Gene Chizik and the North Carolina staff said, okay, this is a different quarterback. This is one thing we can do, and it paid off. And they should be able to flip the field here after that third down stop. Swanson's had an up-and-down season in his first year punting. This one is returnable. Caught on the run. Josh down, surveying the traffic, and goes down at the 50-yard line. 40-yard punt, six-yard return. Beautiful night in the Queen City. Our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Road testing and game ready. Are you ready for the Heisman watch? Caleb Williams, the USC quarterback, considered the front runner, and his numbers similar to Drake May, who has more total yards. Caleb Williams responsible for more touchdowns. It was unfortunate last night that we weren't able to see a fully healthy Caleb Williams in that Pac-12 championship game. Definitely bothered by the injury in his leg. They're going to 
coming off to a flying start. He was injured. The offense wasn't the same. Give Utah credit. They played a great game. Nine yard rush there for May. Those 42 touchdowns responsible for for May this year. Second most in a season in ACC history by a freshman. The record's 44 by Jameis Winston. Of course, won a Heisman Trophy in his career. Nine. This is their best starting field position of the night. An impressive opening drive. Have had just a field goal since then. Even though they have moved the ball up and down the field. First down for Elijah Green. And to put in perspective this season that Drake Mays had to me why he merits Heisman consideration. The last two quarterbacks to average 300 yards per game passing while leading their team in rushing. Johnny Manziel in 2013 and Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> That'd be pretty talented to do what he's doing. Elijah Green swung down by Ruka Roro -Ro -Ro at the 34 yard line. Clemson coach is well aware of Drake May. They recruited him. Dabo Sweeney told us we didn't really think we ever had a serious chance. Big base from the North Carolina family. And he's on target. And it's Antoine Green for another first down. Great boys again. We've talked about his boys. He's, he's scanning the field. He's hanging in the pocket. Came off late to Green for the first down. He was originally committed to Alabama. Thought he would end up at North Carolina. Well, he said he was going to Alabama because he wanted to win. Right. And then when Mac Brown became the coach, he told Drake May, "We are going to win." And they did. They have. Short gain there for Elijah Green, tackled by Miles Murphy. One of the biggest differences in this game so far, and they're in the high red zone right now, and not quite inside the 20, but in the red zone tonight. Clemson three trips, three touchdowns. North Carolina three trips, only one touchdown. Uh, they are nearing that area where they've got to capitalize with the, the yards they've made, their ball possession, all those things. They got to get points. Hey, a little screen, well blocked, and Elijah Green. Has a first down at the 10 yard line. Good call by Phil Longo and well executed. It's man to man, so if you get this man blocked right here, you're going to get a good play. Aaron Carter is responsible for coverage. He gets blocked by William Barnes, and it's an excellent play for the first down. Barnes, the right guard, a first year starter. the ball and they punch it in the end zone for the first time since the first quarter green a nice hole and he's inside the five second and goal again 70 81 yards rushing now I mean, Clemson told us when we talked to West Goodman we've got to neutralize take their run away and really try to affect the quarterback I think North Carolina's had pretty good balance 195 yards passing 81 rushing but enough running success to keep Clemson's defense up. Second and goal. Five and a half to go. Third quarter. Here comes pressure up the middle. May up for grabs and incomplete. And it's Wiggins who's been a standout tonight limping a little bit at the end of that play as the ball sailed over his head. I really think Drake May was throwing that away. I mean, there was pressure coming inside. He didn't really have an open receiver. I think he was trying to back in the end zone. You think four down territory here? Can't keep yeah, kicking field goals. Field goals are not going to help you. You don't know how many times you're going to be inside the five against this defense. You've got the good field position after the punt and the stop by your D. They like to zag runs down here for May. He has plenty of time. Now he's running away from Davis. Throws it right away. injured after the previous play wasn't for very long. Now, he had 
John Copenhaver, the tight end, who was over there. You're going to watch now as he extends the play and leaves the pocket. He's going to have a receiver, number 81, but he just makes a bad pass. He doesn't throw it near his guy, and he throws it right to Nate Wiggins. And then he's not able to make the tackle. And once again, in the red zone and coming away empty in this North Carolina offense. Yeah, that's been the game. I told the officials are looking at the replay to make sure that Wiggins didn't drop the ball to the ground before he got in the end zone. First interception of the season. just have not seen that kind of a mistake by Drake May tonight. The play before that, he had pressure. He threw the ball away out of the back of the end zone. That time, he just made a, 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 a poor throw. He had a receiver, but he made a poor throw. It's his first career interception for Nate Wiggins. Returned at 98 yards, the longest interception return in ACC championship game history. This is the 18th edition. But he was really out of sorts when we did that game at Wake Forest. No doubt. Wake Forest had a big night throwing the ball deep. Wake Forest scored 45 points. They are still determined to see if he dropped the ball here. Back to me, unless you see something I don't. Like, he still has it. He's coming out there. But. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, what do you think? Well, if that's the only if that's the only view they have, Sean, I don't see how they can overturn it. I, I, I think he's After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It's a touchdown. Yeah, I'm not surprised. But boy, has he come on as a player, and apparently, you know, in terms of maturation yeah. as the season went along, I think they were as upset with kind of his vibe and demeanor earlier in the year as they were uh, his spotty play. Yeah, Dabo told us he really challenged them after that game. And after the There's a fake. They're going for two, and they run it in. Drew Sweeney, Dabo's son. Carolina was in the dark. Back to you. All right, that'll be interesting, Coach Prime. Coach Prime. Congratulations. Terrific job at Jackson State. <laughs> Give him away. He's gone to Colorado. Why not bring in a personality like him? of their mistakes and inefficiency in the red zone has been their undoing here in the ballgame. Wiggins was getting some oxygen. He was a little physically ill on the sideline, so he's not out there right now. Low throw. And Antoine Green could rest. And Toriano Pride, the freshman, is in a corner right now, and he's still a little under the weather. Hopefully Scott Johnson will cut off that uh, just in the nick of time. <laughs> the vote for the uh, MVP of the game and right now I think it's a really tough call between Klopnik uh, who certainly changed the game and Wiggins uh, really tough call they've both been outstanding Rick May pass batted in the air a diving attempt made and the catch made by Downs it was Trenton Simpson who got a hand on the pass of his old 7-on-7 seven seven teammate Drake May Tied up there with Spencer Rollins. They knew he wasn't going to get to the quarterback. Did the next best thing. Just kind of go up in the air, time it, get a hand on the football. Downs 
It is nine for 86. He's got over a thousand yards receiving for the second time in his career. John Brown, the only other target to do that. May going deep this time for Green. And he was well covered by Toriano Pry, the true freshman from St. Louis. He was in there in that entire series for Wiggins. Well, they felt like, hey, Wiggins is out. We've had trouble making plays against him. Let's try Antoine Green on the freshman. Clyde was in perfect position to make a play on that one. Credit to the youngster coming in in place of Nate Wiggins and holding his own on third down. And Kiernan to punt again. Going to get it off here quickly. Yeah. And he does. And it's a rocket. Antonio Williams backpedaled to the 16, fell down just inside the 15. 55-yard punt. Send you to break. We'll give you the athletic review question. Do not cheat while we're away. Clemson trying to make it seven ACC titles in the last eight years. They won six in a row, and they didn't qualify for the game last year. Pitt beat Wake Forest. Dave Clemson handed off to Will Shipley. He got stacked up and sent back. All right, it's time for the answer. Who's the only ACC championship game MVP from the losing team? You know? You do. You do. Go ahead and blurt it out. C.J. Spiller. The answer to our athletic trivia question is indeed C.J. Spiller. 301 all-purpose yards in four touchdowns. They lost to Georgia Tech 39-34. He had 233 rushing yards in that game. time they lost the conference championship game. Back in 2009, they've won seven in a row since. C.J. Storm, now the running back coach. They're 6-0 in title games here in Charlotte. Shovel pass ahead to Shipley. And a first down. The other thing that's interesting or different about the championship game this year is the last year for divisions in the ACC, right? Yeah, they're going so to one conferences. big conference yep. next Come year. Come out of the field for an injured player from defense. Jamari Ritzy is the injured Tar Heel. That music means one thing. It's Week 13, NFL Sunday, 10 a.m., the Countdown Crew, ESPN and the app. Early breaking stories, injury updates, pre's of each game, and then the kickoffs of the NFL games. And Monday night, also on ESPN, the Portes and the app, the Saints and the Tampa Bay Bucks. That's at 8 Eastern time. Peyton and Eli will be on ESPN, too. The Bucks, 5 and 6. Football. And we showed CJ Spiller as they helped Ritzy off. Last week, it was 237 yards rushing for Clemson right. against South Carolina. And they lost only the second time yep. under Dabo Sweeney. They had lost in rushing for 200 yards. The other loss was that way game, back right? in 2009, that uh, game against Georgia Tech. Yeah. little yeah. bonus <laughs> Aflac information. I'm sure America has enjoyed it. Jay you Spiller. were great in that on camera, by the way. Thank you. Yes. James Davis, Thunder and Lightning, great running back tandem. I just, hey, you know, I just, just, I just show up. I just it's show up. It's getting toward punchy to time. You know, it was uh, late night, past my bedtime. Pass incomplete, trying to get it to Adam Randall. Marcus Allen had the coverage. Marcus Allen is a good-looking young corner for North Carolina. He had to play last week about 24, 25 snaps because of injuries. And, uh, he gets the start tonight. Played well in the game last week in the loss to North Carolina State. They are continuing to recruit very well. You know, that's one of the reasons why the win total has improved in the four years under Mac Brown. Out wide and caught up. Will Hardy, you know, one of those freshmen, highly talented recruits out of Greater Atlanta Christian Made the tackle. There's an 
another good recruit. Played high school football for his dad, Tim, in Atlanta. And a couple of freshmen, true freshmen, Hardy and Allen, forced in tonight. Klumpnik throwing it up for grabs, hoping for Randall. They grabbed him. They didn't really need to. It'll be pass interference on legend Cavazos. The interesting thing about this is Klubnik throws this ball so high that Cavazos, I think, just gets impatient. He doesn't know where the ball is, and he panics and goes into the body of Randall. Holding offense number nine, pass interference, defense number six. He's dumped his wall set. We play first down. Jake Brenningstool guilty of the hold. Tight end number nine staying in to help protect. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's a takedown. I don't think either team has that argument with the no. flag. They're against them on that play. One of the few times we really don't need to bring Matt Austin in. He's just laughing. For a rules yeah. question. Club Nick on the run. And it's dropped. Cole Turner. <laughs> One of the big surprises of this game. He played in only one game. It was against Miami for eight snaps. He had one catch for nine yards. But you know, they've been lacking that deep throw all year long. Mo Collins is out for the rest of the year. He's going to have shoulder surgery. He's kind of a big target down the field. But maybe Turner's a guy with some speed who can do that. He's a 68-yard catch well, in the he, first half. And he's also a guy that maybe has been a red shirt, and they can play in four games. Right, it's just, just his second game. Here's Brandon Spector weaving inside the 20 and then taken down from behind. But another big gainer through the air. Heyman Rucker, the defensive end, outstanding player, ran him down. 43 yards, 38 after the catch. I think Clemson feels right now fatigue in this North Carolina defense. You can see a lot of hands on hips, slow getting in their stance, and that's why Clemson is hurrying up and getting to the line. I mean, they're going to play super fast or hyper fast, but they are giving the impression or the threat that they could go fast at any time. But there's fatigue, particularly up front with that defensive line. Love it. Little throwback screen for the tight end, Davis Allen. And he's going bounds, apparently. And he has a first down, first and goal. Looked like the Tar Heels thought they had pumped him out of bounds, but they had not. Again, this defensive line looks worn out. Because of injuries, they just haven't been able to rotate as many guys in. And towards the second half and later in the ballgame, they get worn down. And that's what it looks like right now. They get off the field with the tempo. Tag, did they? To stop Shipley? No, they did not. Touchdown. And it's all Clemson here in the second half of the Subway ACC Championship. Shipley, a two-yard touchdown run. As a powerful runner for a guy who's not all that big, I mean, he very seldom loses yardage, has great strength and leg drive, and just powers his way into the end zone. Stays low and keeps chopping. And to your point about fatigue on the defense, you know, it looked like they had him stacked and just couldn't finish it. When you get tired on the defensive line, you stand up. You, you lose leverage, you lose your strength and your base. It's a tired looking defense right now. set it up. That was the longest catch of his career. Well, look at championship weekend. Utah down 17-3. to Rallied to win the Pac-12 again. What a coach Kyle Whittingham is. Cam Rising, the quarterback, was terrific. Great game today in Arlington, Texas. The Big 12. TCU rallied for 11 down late to force it into overtime. Couldn't score on fourth and inches. And lost for the first time this year. And then uh, Georgia, definitive number one, wins the SEC. Yeah, another 
Outstanding game by Stetson Bennett. Four touchdown passes. Georgia still the team to beat in this whole thing. After the touchback of the Carolina ball, we think back to last week. You and I uh, had the games, uh, South Carolina at Clemson. Clemson was number eight, even though they had one loss. Uh, but we talked about there was a path to if they could win out. And they have to be picking themselves now because, you know, the path opened up with several teams ahead of them losing and getting out of the picture. And if the committee, you know, sticks with what they say about conference champions meaning a lot. You know, they would have been in, in a pretty strong right. position. I think if they were there as a one loss yeah. at Notre Dame, a very good Notre Dame team. Conference champion, given all the teams that get knocked out of the picture uh, since we had that conversation last week. LSU losing last week. Obviously, USC losing last night. They're out of the picture. Ohio State suffered a loss. You know, if they were there to be compared to Ohio State, for example, which right. I think most people think they're going to get. Yeah. They would right. be a one-loss conference champion, Correct. Clemson, where Ohio State didn't play in its championship game. Right. Well, the Buckeyes are very fortunate that it also played out for them. As Alabama still hanging on to hope. Diving catch made by Josh Downs. Number 201 of his career. There with uh, two very narrow losses. Yeah. Uh, on That's the road, the excellent team. A total of four points that maybe they'll be included. Last play of the game, too, right? We're heading to the fourth quarter. ACC championship trophy is here. Next, heading back to a familiar location. Clemson, South Carolina. Tigers lead 39-10 as we go to the fourth quarter. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, and Molly McGrath. And a first down run for Elijah Green, taken down by Trenton Simpson. They were, uh, Clemson was in the rare place last year of sitting at home watching Pitt, Wake Forest play for the championship. Okay, down the seam, nice catch. Morales, who was a factor on that opening touchdown drive, went down to haul it in. His third catch of the night. Set the ACC freshman passing yardage record with that last completion. Updated after this additional yardage to Josh Downs. Jameis Winston had the record back in 2013. That eight yard total, 4,079 yards. And he's just getting started. Reminds me of the great Clemson quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Size, you know, the running ability, the long strider, the competitiveness, the poise, everything you'd want. The intelligence, leadership skills. Green carries. There's his dad, Mark, who was a fine quarterback at North Carolina in the 80s. Two-year starter. In fact, Mac Brown said if he had hurt his shoulder, he would have been an NFL quarterback. Coached for a year for Mac Brown as a graduate assistant. It's a uh, pretty good gene pool in that family. Luke Bay, <laughs> standout basketball player. They really are, in the opinion of me, the first family of Carolina Athletics. Receiver slipped down. There is a flag thrown. Gavin Blackwell, the intended receiver, Toriano Pride, pleading his case. Uh, I, I think the ball was underthrown. Defense number 23. 15 yard penalty automatic. First down. And as Blackwell tried to slow down for it, Pride just couldn't slow down and ran right over him. He was falling down, but the defender did run into him because he had no idea where the ball was. Pride cometh before the fall. Carolina brother Luke 
There's Dad. Helmet's a little bit different back then. Big old shoulder pads. You used to wear those. Yeah. Luke, great basketball player, hit a big shot against Kentucky. 2017 championship run. Cole was a pitcher for the Florida Gators. They won the College World Series. His brother Bo is on the UNC Hoops team right now. And is Drake's roommate. Bryson Nesbitt catches the little quick slant. That is quite a family. It is. It really is. Dad glum with the way this one is going. But the future is bright. Not only the ACC freshman record, but the shattered Mitch Trubisky single in season passing yardage by any class. At the University of North Carolina. get them in the right places with the play clock running down. Here comes pressure. May fires it away. Trenton Simpson coming after his old buddy Drake May again. There's a lot of these guys know each other. Drake May and Will Shipley are friends in the uh, summertime. They play together. They work out together. If May wants to throw some balls, sometimes Shipley will meet him somewhere and they'll go do it. And when Shipley committed to Clemson, May decided to go to North Carolina. May treated out. I'll see you in the ACC championship. Tweet came to fruition. He's trying to find an escape, and now he throws it away. Touchdown, a block field goal, a field goal, a pick six, and now a turnover on down. That's not going to get it done. Well, coverage provided by Goodyear, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. 64,115 the attendance tonight. 18 Subway ACC championship game. Some of them have headed out with the outcome seemingly no longer in doubt. Quick throw, Jake Burning's duel. Fights ahead for about three. He has a little bone for Jake because he hadn't gotten the ball thrown to him. So far in the game, he's been a really valuable addition to the team this year. There's a flag. After the play, personal foul on us during roughness. Offense number 70. Down counts, Pelican in force, half the distance to the goal. He's second down. Tristan Lee is the backup left tackle in for Jordan McFadden. Yeah, it's a little unnecessary. Jordan McFadden, by the way, congratulations to him. Graduate student left tackle. Won the uh, Jacobs blocking trophy. He's the best blocker in the ACC this year. Uh, the offensive line that Brandon Streeter describes as tough and nasty. One that gelled as the year went along. Rick Cox is a freshman, Adam Randall. Adam Randall is a guy that they have high hopes for. He's a guy who really shows out in practice. He's explosive. He's big. He's got really good hands. But it just has not translated to the game yet. He's a young freshman like Antonio Williams. Just hasn't been on the same pace as his classmate, Antonio Williams. But now they've got a lot of different receivers in the game. I think those guys are shocked to get some good game action in the fourth quarter. Lutnick throwing it up for grabs. Nice catch. It's Cole Turner again. All he does is catch long passes. 68 yards in the first half. Even while having his shirt held, he hauls that one in for 27 yards. You know, they haven't had a 100-yard receiver this year. Turner, who very few outside of Clemson had ever heard of prior to tonight, might be the first. There are only six FBAS teams this year that didn't have at least one game of a 100-yard receiver. Drew Sweeney slammed down by Will Hardy. How 
crazy would that be? Their first 100-yard receiver if it was Turner. Do you want a bonus Affleck question? And the other number stands out, too. The wide receivers collectively average 140 receiving yards. That's 98 in the country. And this is from the school that has had... There's a long throw. Oh, Randall can't make the catch. 11 receivers drafted since 2013, tied with Ohio State for the most. The other teams that don't have a 100-yard receiver this year? I do know. Go ahead. I mean, I wrote it down on my chart. Well, New Mexico State, yes, Boise correct. State, correct. Rutgers, correct. Wyoming, yes. and UConn. Wow. You are exactly right. But they just don't have the big playmaking wide receiver. You can see the T. Higgins is Justin Ross is those guys. Ooh, pressure right up the middle. Klubnik not bothered by it. Drew Sweeney to catch. And a first down into North Carolina territory. Klubnik now 19 for 23 for 274 and a touchdown. I think you and I agree that he's the MVP, even though Wiggins has been great because the game Runs changed and its first immediately yeah. and dramatically. When he came in after two series from DJ Uyunglele and two free and outs. On ABC is brought to you by Subway. Try the all-new Subway Series menu. Your pick of 12 irresistible subs. And in part by IHD Hotels and Resorts. Okay, Klubnik getting congratulations from his teammates. A hug from Coach Dabo Sweeney. He's going to leave the game now. After a magnificent performance off the bench for DJ Uyunglele after two series. Resulted no first downs. Here's the third quarterback of the night, Hunter Johnson. And it's a handoff for Kobe Pace. He turns the corner. The club think it shouldn't be a big surprise. One of the great resumes you'll ever see in high school football. He was the Texas Player of the Year. He was a finalist for National Player of the Year. He's the MVP of the Elite 11 camp. Guided the powerhouse Westlake in Austin, Texas to three straight state championships. First quarterback to go undefeated as a starter, winning back-to-back -back state titles in Texas's highest classification since Tyler Murray. He wasn't bad. Drew Brees and Nick Foles. Yep. Hamp Green, the, the reception. Five-star recruit was Hunter Johnson. You know, like Klubnik, he came out of high school in Brownsburg, Indiana. Considered to be the best quarterback in the country. ESPN had him rated that. Started his career at Clemson. Won season there, transferred to Northwestern, was there for four years, did not play very much, and he has returned to Clemson this year as a graduate transfer. He was originally rolling in Clemson back in January of 2017. Kobe Pace, the ball carrier. There's a familiar name to us, football fans, Ty Herbstreet. Our colleague, Kirk Herbstreet. Dabo, when he has a chance, he gets everybody. He'll game. play as many guys as he can. A lot of years during his tenure, they have led the country in number of players participating per game. And it looks like they're trying to improve on that mark tonight. To the chagrin of our great spotter, Zach Patrizone, trying to find some of these people on our charts. Kobe Pace. Looks like he got. The first down, or did he? You know what? That's a stop by North Carolina. That that shows some heart and fight still in this football team. They're tired, they're beat, and they're uh, bowing their neck here on third and fourth down. It does look like Clemson got the first down. At the 38-yard line. Turner back out there. Put on the field is the runner made the lines again and the plays under further review. 
And this is where replay people just need to apply some common sense. 7 11 to go. Compared to most of any school, they're 7 and 1, lost the first one in 09 to Georgia Tech. Won seven straight since. A stretch of six years in a row 2015 to 2020. Winning the championship, didn't make it to Charlotte last year. They're about to make it. Seven out of eight. Open receiver. And the catch made just before Jalen Phillips got there to knock down J.J. Jones for his first catch of the game. All backups in the game right now for Clemson on defense. And Wade Woodaz, who is a linebacker, is actually playing safety, probably because of some injuries and some changes defensively. He's number 17. And on every other play, Wes Goodman goes out and kind of gives a personal coaching instruction of what he's doing in safety. Talented athlete. And they're scrambling around a little bit on defense at the snap, understandably so. Chance one three, taken out of bounds by Toriano Pride. Well, Wes Goodman was thrown into a tough spot. Which he's never been an on-the-field coach. He's always been an analyst and very, very highly regarded one, both at Clemson and in the NFL for Bruce Arians. He raves about Wes. Brent Venables left. He wanted to take Wes Goodwin with him. Dabble Swain said, no, you're staying. You're going to be the defensive coordinator. And you take over a group that's been in the top 15 in the country defense eight years in a row. Yeah. It's a tough act to follow. Yeah, some people criticize Dabo, you know, not going outside the program to hire either one of his coordinators. When Tony Elliott left to be the Virginia coach. He elevated Brandon Streeter on offense. His opinion is, is, hey, if there's guys in the program that deserve it, then I'm going to give them a chance. Absolutely. Elijah Green, the ball carry. And why wouldn't you, right? These guys have been here for a while. Right. They're working very hard. Brandon Streeter has been on the staff since 2015. Much of that time, the recruiting coordinator, a big part of all the success they've had bringing in the great talent to win these championships. They know the system. You and I have been to Clemson a lot. In a lot of places they talk about culture, but they don't have it. At Clemson, they do have the culture. Long throw, and it's intercepted by Jaden Lucas, a true freshman with his first career interception. There's a flag down. did a great job again of just kind of forcing the receiver J.J. Jones out of bounds and he was the only one that could make a play on the football. Well they lost the turnover battle five games in a row but not tonight. Strong effort by Wes Goodwin's defense. where the trophy presentation for the Subway ACC Championship game will be seen on the ESPN app and the ACC Network as soon as we're finished here. If you want to stay tuned, Molly McGrath has been preparing for this as long as she can. There's Ty Herbstreet taking a little flip forward from Hunter Johnson. Under five minutes to go. plus points in all but one game this season. The loss of Notre Dame. They lost 35 to 14. Two to one. The best team they promoted for the fifth. Brandon Streeter did a very nice job. Cedric Gray made the tackle on Dominic Thomas. He's in. There's Brandon. Rounded his whole life. His dad, Barry, was the coach at Gettysburg College in Pennsylvania for 38 years. The head coach. Brandon was the ball boy. Used to hold his dad's headset cord. His dad won 196 games. Retired in 2017. He's going to be the first <laughs> Clemson receiver this season to go over 100. He had one catch all year prior to tonight. That's crazy. That's three catches for Cole for 101 yards. 
So scratch them off that list of teams that haven't had a 100 yard receiver this year. Time out on the field for an injured player to the defense. Travis Shaw is the injured player. But Dabo Sweeney's such a good guy. You know, Kevin Turner's teammate at Alabama died of ALS. Dabo, among other things, told him, I'll take care of your boys. Had Nolan play for him, and now Cole's there. And we talked all night about V-Week, reports of raising more money for research. Dabo's all-in team foundation has given more than $1.8 million to local hospitals research for breast cancer prevention, early detection, and they now have two mobile mammography vans that go into areas where women might not otherwise have health care access for early detection. It's deeply meaningful to the Sweeney's. Dabo's wife, Kathleen, lost her sister, Lisa Lamb, to breast cancer back in 2014. You know, he's a prominent man, and he does an awful lot of good to help other people. There's Dominic Thomas. And he is looking ahead. You know, they're going to play in the Orange Bowl. It's going to be a conference championship. Those are both big things. But he has uh, Santa coming. He has a huge, <laughs> he's like Clark Griswold. Yeah. So we visited last week. Yeah. We asked him how was your Thanksgiving party, dinner. Right? He said dinner was great, but then from 7 to 11, we got out and we started stringing up all the lights. Yeah. And he said, we said, you're like Clark Griswold. He said, oh, yeah, no, we definitely are. Then he showed us pictures of his house from previous years. <laughs> he has a Santa come, and the Santa goes up on the roof. Well, now with Dabo's fancy house, it's more like a, it's a balcony. Yeah, a terrace. Yeah. Keith Adams is in. This is Will Taylor back from the Wyoming injury. Santa is, uh, that might be his Santa, right? He's got the logo. I'm thinking he's got a, he's got a better, better Santa. What's wrong with that Santa? Point orange, not red. Once showing his allegiance. Now, there are going to be a lot of kids around America who aren't fans of Clemson who are crying because Santa is not a fan of their favorite team. Hopefully, they're already asleep. Keith Adams, the running back. Johnson faked it to him, threw it out wide to Taylor. Legend Cavazos made the tackle. And they turn it over on downs. Well, here we go. Just about all the games have been played. Tomorrow, the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups. The semifinals are in the Fiesta and Peach Bowls. They played on New Year's Eve on ESPN. Reese and the guys will also unveil the other New Year's Six Bowl games. Clemson heading for the Orange Bowl, most certainly. They'll have the final top 25 rankings in a four-hour special. It's a new tomorrow after Sunday NFL countdown. Those were the, the last. Jack Jackson, we believe, was on the punt here. Josh Downs and his former high school teammate Carter in conversation. All right, going to put you on the spot. Georgia number one for sure. Yep. yep. Uh, looks Michigan like looks like up. they're Michigan's taking gonna control win. that one. They're, they're number two. two. Yep. Then where do you go from there? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go TCU three and Ohio State four. Is what I would do. I, I, I will not be surprised at all if it, if that's reversed. But that's I, I, I would, would be. I mean, you thought TCU was better. It'd be you, the committee, uh, before last week. Ohio State didn't play. Yeah. The TCU lost an overtime game to a ten-win Kansas State team to beat five ranked teams. Uh, I just and I you know. And this is this is me as a fan. Uh, I would, you know, Michigan beat Ohio State in the game, right? And they beat them convincingly by 22 at home. And they would have to turn around. If Ohio State is three, they'd have to turn around and play them again, right? In the semifinal, if they meet again in the for the national championship, kind of like Alabama and Georgia did a couple years ago, that's fine. But I, I'd rather not see them have to play each other. In the I, I, I would agree with that. I think most college football fans would as well. all around on the Clemson sideline. Well, with 
Will Shipley being a sophomore and Cade Klubnick being a freshman, they got to recruit or go into transfer portal and find a couple more receivers. I mean, this is a team that, you know, the, the, the future is, is still very bright for Clemson. Yep. Jacoby Criswell, who's in now, throws to Bryson Nesbitt. I think it is for North Carolina as well. Uh, they're recruiting well. May He may be the best quarterback in the country for the next few years. A nine-win season, the nine and four as they await their bowl destination for Matt Brown. Disappointing ending with three straight losses at 1.9 to one. Coaches rave, by the way, about how Criswell can throw it. Takes off running there, got tackled by Keith McGuire. Disappointing night for May, but another conference championship for Clemson. Seventh and eight years. First team in a Power Five conference to win seven in eight years since Alabama won eight out of nine, 1971 to 79. Remarkable consistency, remarkable excellence. The 11 win season is the eighth for Dabo Sweeney in his 14 full seasons as coach of the Tigers. And he is with Molly McGrath. Coach, in the third series of 